All right, so in this video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to set up the wiring with a two-speed Mopar wiper motor to a on-off on toggle switch. So uh, the reason I'm doing this is because it's been raining more often than it usually does in California. So uh, because of that, I haven't been able to drive this baby, uh, mainly because the car has the painless wiring harness. Uh, the previous owner was doing it, but looks like he didn't finish some parts of it. So one of the parts is the wiper motor. Um, it had a ballast resistor on top of it like this, but mine broke. It's mounted right there with the strap. Um, so I did have an extra one. I'm gonna mount it right here just because it's a different size from the other one. And I can't really mount it on top of the wiper motor, but it, it'll be the same thing pretty much. Uh, just make sure that if you have, if you do have a Mopar, don't get this one confused with the ignition ballast resistor because there are two different things. Uh, I don't need one for my ignition because uh, I have the Holly Sniper EFI and MSD ignition and all that good stuff. So uh, that's usually where it's at, but I'm just going to leave it there. That way I could, you know, make the wiring a little bit easier for myself. So I was basically just bench testing the wiper motor. It does work. I was able to find that these two pins right here are for the power. And then this one right here is basically to stop the motor and reset it back to where it's supposed to be rested like that down over here. Um, I couldn't figure out how to wire this in to the switch. So for now, it's just going to have to be, um, I'm just going to have to turn the switch off when I think it's getting near bottoming out. But uh, if you guys know how I can wire this in, let me know because that would really make things a lot better. So, all right, so let's take a look at the diagram that I have written out. Here's the diagram I wrote out for you guys. If I were to not use the ballast resistor, it would be technically a one speed wiper motor. Uh, the way it gets its second speed, the, the slower speed, is through the ballast resistor because it reduces the amount of volts the uh, wiper gets. So what I'm gonna be doing is for the low speed right here, I'm gonna be putting a wire from one end of the ballast resistor going all the way to the uh, on position, one of the on positions on the uh, toggle switch so that'll give me my low speed right there and then what I'm also going to do is I'm going to run a wire from the other end of the ballast resistor down to the wiper motor I'm going to be connecting it to the pin that receives the uh, 12 volts and then from there I'm going to run a wire that goes directly to the other on position on the toggle switch which will give me the uh, full high speed and then of course this uh, bottom pin on the wiper motor is just grounded to wherever you'd like and then in order to get the power for all of this, we're just going to run a wire from the, uh, basically, uh, I guess you would call that the, the off of the toggle switch with the fuse in the middle all the way to the battery. So the basic things you're going to need for this is a on off on toggle switch. I got this at AutoZone. Um, some wire cutters, just some wire to use. I got some other wires here, but this might be all I need. Uh, this is optional. I got some heat shrinks just to secure the ends on the wires. Uh, a fuse. The one I got is a 20 amp. And then the next thing you're going to need is the uh, quick disconnects. So we can just use those to plug into the pins on the wiper motor, the ballast resistor, and then also the toggle switch. Alright, so for step number one, we're going to figure out where we're going to put our toggle switch at. I already know the perfect spot for mine. I'm going to be putting my toggle switch uh, right in there. Uh, that's the best place for me because I don't have to cut anything out. And I've already fitted it. I basically just have to unscrew that top thing that says on, on. Unscrew that, put it through the back, screw it back on, and it fits perfectly. So this is where I'm going to be putting it. I just have to make sure to run all my wires through under the dash to this switch. All right, so for step number two, I'm gonna measure how much wire I'm gonna need for each one of these sections. And after that, we'll put the quick disconnects on it. All right, so I got my quick disconnect crimped on there. I'm gonna plug this one in to uh, this side of the ballast resistor, just like that. And then I'm gonna run the wire all the way to the switch inside. Right, I'm gonna go around, I'm gonna pull it through. Yes. Put 
pull and just pull it through. All right, so the next wire you're gonna do. All right, so I just, I basically did this one, right? No, I just did this one from the bounce resistor to the switch. So now I'm gonna do the uh, middle one, which goes from the battery to the toggle switch. Okay, so I uh, put the wire inside through the grommet. So for this wire, we have to have a fuse holder or a fuse tap. Uh, I'm gonna worry about that later. I'm also gonna worry about, you know, connecting it to the battery later. That's easy stuff, so I'm just gonna set that aside. And then we're gonna jump to the next wire that we need. So that next wire is the one that goes from the toggle switch back up to the wiper motor and to the ballast resistor. So I'm basically gonna have two wires going into one quick disconnect, which is gonna go onto that piece right, that, that part right there on the wiper motor. Uh, since I have to fit two wires into one quick disconnect, I'm just gonna use some thinner wire. So I now have the two wires going into one quick disconnect. So one end goes to the ballast resistor. This end is gonna go to where the power goes on the wiper motor. The other end of the disconnect is gonna go inside the grommet to the switch. So let me pass that through there. After we got all our wires going inside, the next step is to install our ground wire. So I've already put a quick disconnect on this. I'm just gonna plug this in to the lower end right there. Once it's connected, I could go ahead and ground it. The little thing right here, I'm basically just gonna stick it in here, or stick it behind, and then and then it closes back up. So let me let me do that real quick. Here we got those three things complete. Let's check out our diagram. All right. So it looks like we got all of our wires going to our switch. So let's go ahead and wire up our switch. All right, so I have some quick disconnects on the end of the switch. I should have like marked one of these with a Sharpie or color coded it. Um, but basically, make sure you know which wire is which. This one's my 12 volt wire. So this one's gonna go straight to the middle of the switch. So go ahead and wire that in. And then these other two, one's gonna be my uh, low speed and my other one's gonna be my high speed one. It doesn't really matter which one ends up on which because either way it's going to do the same thing it's just a matter of if I want it to be when I click down or up so I'll go ahead and wire those in all right so after I have everything connected I'm going to go ahead and mount it into its spot So this is what the wire looks like, wired in. So now it's time to connect everything. So the last step for all of this to work is connecting this to our battery. This is the wire that goes to the middle of the switch right there. Um, so before we plug that in, we gotta remember that we gotta put a fuse in it. I actually don't have a fuse holder on me right now. I am gonna get one later, but just for the sake of finishing this video, um, I'm basically gonna get that fuse right there. I'm gonna put two disconnects on each end of the fuse and then splice the wire in half and then connect each end to each quick disconnect. Okay, so it should look something like this. Then this part's gonna go somewhere on the battery. It's up to you how you wanna you know, mount it in there. Since my battery's about to die right now on my phone, I'm just gonna stick this in anywhere just so you guys can see that it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that there. I'm gonna connect my ground. So if everything works for the switch, we should get a low speed and then off and then a high speed. Uh, like I said earlier, doing it this way, it's not gonna give you the function of making the wipers set back to its like resting spot. Um, if any of you guys know how I could wire that into the switch, let me know in the comments. But otherwise, I'm gonna have to deal with this for now just to get through the rain. So top speed should be low speed. There you go. And yeah, I need to put some wipers on there. Um, and then stop. See how it just stops in the middle like that? Um, I'm basically just gonna have to, I'm gonna have to like go until it stops. And then the bottom speed is a high speed like that. 
which I don't think I'm really ever going to need that speed, but we'll see. Ah, let's try to stop it down there. There, there we go. That's good enough. But all right, that's uh, pretty much it. I do plan on finding the correct uh, wiper switch and then the correct wiper harness that goes there. Uh, but for now, this should do just because it's been raining here in California and then I haven't been able to drive it because of that. Well, also because I still don't have my windows, but I mean, I already I just still don't have my windows installed. I do have them. I just can't figure out how the heck I'm supposed to install them. Like this one, it goes up, but it doesn't go up straight. It goes up like this. I do plan on making an update video on this dart just because it's completely different than when you guys saw it a couple months back. We got chrome, we got different tires, different wheels, suspension's all different, the motor looks different, uh, trans is different, it finally has interior that's black, and then what else have we done? Rear end is different, so a lot of things that I've changed on this.